Good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome back to Air Radio Sal Geruna Spain today, 13th January 2021, as usual, Monday to Friday, the bulletins. We start with Point newspaper, the first headline on Point newspaper, TRRC details, killing of data on James orders. And then Gambia experiencing triple burden of malnutrition. KMC receives notifications on malpractice at council. And also Supreme Court sit on UDP's motion expertise today. GRA gets new commissioner of customs. And new book by historian Hussein Sisi discourse role of Gambian chiefs in colonial rule. The national news from point DLEAG arrest suspect with drug pedal, uh, suspect drug pedal rather. And also Gambia Maritime Administration validates strategic plan 2022 to 2026 moa disposes 3.5 million loan to farmers udp console brief families in tragic fire accident in bronze usa so those are the headlines from point USA. let's go to standard newspaper and see what they have brought for us. The first story on Standard News about Gambia beat Mauritania in Afghan debut. Latest condolences on the bronze fire. Koroi, the gallant scorpions. KMC questions motive for inquiry. Dr. Abdul Karim Sisi awarded MBE. And also, Desmond Tutu, a leadership role model for all ages. Then, where is the legitimacy and legality of the KMC inquiry? UDP review application. And also, borrow oil to appoint competent cabinet. Court orders non cooperating witness to appear or face, let me see, or face competent charges by and force. GRA gets new commissioner of customs and also is DB. ISDB Organized Trade Investment Forum for OIC member. And FAO and NANA, sorry, FAO and NANA launch National Nutrition Week 2022. So those are the headlines from Standard newspaper let's see uh, what they said where is the legitimacy and legality of the KMC inquiry this one is a press I think and read by Spain. now the details in August last year KMC general counsel suspended its CEO for alleged acts of corruption and request the relevant authorities to investigate in response the minister responsible for local government musa drame stifled the process and caused the police to attempt to forcefully reinstate the ceo instead of supporting the due process to unfold following this the minister went ahead to also send inspectors to KMC. 
Since then, the minister has not yet publicly released any report from his inspectors to, so that also as to inform the general public about the state of affairs. But this week, he claimed to have set up a commission of inquiry into KMC to probe allegations of corruption and fraud. The minister said he is relying on section 151, one in bracket, a in bracket of local government act. In the first place, there is no section 151 and one in bracket, a in bracket in the local government act. Rather, it is section 151, two in bracket, a in bracket, that provides for the creation of a commission of inquiry by the minister. But before establishing the commission, section 151, one in bracket, provides that the minister has to first receive a report highlighting improper conduct in the council. Following this, the minister may cause the council to convene a meeting where he will point out the regularities found and give the council any guardians necessary. When the council fail to address the regularities or fail to follow the guardians of the minister or if the minister considers the matter to be grave, then that is the time the minister can institute a commission on inquiry as per section 1512 in bracket A in bracket. The question therefore is, has the minister received any such report first of all? Next, has the minister caused a, caused a meeting the council to take place? Finally, has the minister pointed out to the council the irregularities or has the provided any has he provided any guardians? These issues did not reflect in the letter of the minister to KMC about setting up a commission. Secondly, the minister has not shown the public if KMC has failed to address the irregularities or has ignored the guardians of the minister. The public has a right to know for purposes of transparency and accountability in line with good governance if these actions were done or not. Otherwise, how can the minister justify that his decision to set up a commission is not arbitrary and therefore meant for ulterior motives. The minister has a duty to be transparent and accountable. Thirdly, if the minister is indeed interested in the good governance of the local councils, then he must address the general poor performance, corruption, and blatant unit unethic uh, unethic behaviors blatant and unethic behaviors perpetuated in the councils not long ago the chairman of brikama area council Sonko, was heard in an audio having an ethical conversation with a lady councillor where sex trade was discussed his actions clearly violated the ethics of office for which there was every justification for the minister to take action. But Mr. Drame never acted on that. Why? That aside, Brikama Area Council has been engulfed in a number of scandals and poor performance that even led to a massive protest against the council by young people of the region in 2019. This is the only council since 2017 against which residents rose up to challenge them for corruption and poor performance. The issue in the local councils are 
such that if Minister Musa Drame fails to address them but only wishes to focus on KMC, then it will be obvious that he has a bone to pick with mayor of the council. Therefore, Minister Drame must be stopped in his tracks that he cannot toy with local councils who are directly elected representatives of the grassroots. Yes, corruption and poor performance must be fought tooth and nail, but that fight must be done and seen to be done fairly, justly and without bias. There should be no scared crowd or scared cows rather of scapegoats, scapegoats, rather the fight for transparency and accountability has to be legal and legitimate. In the meantime, I strongly advise KMC leadership to refuse this commission and take the matter to court because it is illegally set up. At the same time, I urge President Adam Barrow to also set up a commission of inquiry on the Ministry of Lands and Regional Government and its minister for the dubious land deals taking place under their preview. It ends the statement. Don't go. We'll be back momentarily with another story after a short jungle. Welcome back. Still with Standard News of UDP Review Application. This is a introduction read by Hajarama Air Rio Salger Runa Spin. One, by a motion expertise dated and filed on the 10th day of January 2022, the petitioner or applicant is seeking leave of this court to make an application for review of this court's ruling dated the 28th of December 2021 and for such further or, or other orders as to this honorable court may seem, may seem just. The motion is supported by the affidavit of Al-Haji S. Dabo sworn on the 10th of January 2022. We rely on the said Avidev facts. Two, the facts as contained in the Avidev in support of the motion are that the applicant filed a petition on the, on the 14th December 2021. Pass 1 to section 49 and 127 of the Constitution and provisions of the Election Act seeking to invalidate the election of Adama Barrow. The first respondent, by reason of inter alia corrupt practices, widespread irregularities, and illegal practices. 3. The petitioner also filed a motion expertise on the same day pass one to section 98 two in bracket and three in bracket of the elections act and rule nine of the election petition rules praying the court a to fix the amount that the petitioner shall give as security for the payment of all cost charges and expenses b in what manner such security shall be given and c for such further and other orders as this honorable court may deem fit to make. For on the 16th of December 2021, second day after petis 
uh, presentation rather of the petition. The petitioner moved its motion for security and the court order ordered that a in bracket the petitioner or applicant shall provide security in the sum of three hundred thousand dollars for the payment of all cost charges and expenses relating to this suit b in bracket the security shall be the form shall be in the form of cash deposit with the master registrar master and the, or the registrar or payment into a bank and see in bracket the petitioner or the applicant shall comply with the order not later than close of business on Tuesday the 21st of December 2021 and shall file proof of such compliance with the court. Fifth, pass one to the order of the court aforesaid the petitioner deposited the sum of $300,000 into the account of the master held at Bloom Bank limited on the 17th of December 2021, third day of the presentation of the petition. The petitioner or applicant filed the notice of compliance with the order of the court on the 21st of December 2021. Six, meanwhile, the petition itself had been served on the first respondent on the 15th of December 2021 on the same day. The petitioner applied to join the Independent Electoral Commission as second respondent and the application was granted on the 16th of December 2021. The second respondent was accordingly served with the amendment petition adding its name its name and notice of notice of mention of the case on the 17th December 2021. Seventh, the first respondent entered conditional appearance on the the 16th of December and a conditional answer to the petition on the 20th of December 2021. The first respondent filed two motions on the 16th December and 20th December 2021, respectively seeking to strike out the petition. Both motions were subsequently dismissed. The third motion dated the 21st December 2021 and which resulted in the striking out of the petition. Prayed for the following. 1. The petition of the petitioner be dismissed for non-compliance with the requirement to give notice to the first respondent and the nature of the security provided with five days after the presentation of the petition in accordance with the requirements of Rule 11 of the Election Petition Rules. Two, that such non-compliance is fatal to the proceeding. Three, for such further or other orders as to this court shall seem fit. Eight, after hearing viewer vo voice argument on the motion the court firm and held that the petitioner applicant failed to comply with the requirement of rule 11 in that it did not serve the first respondent a notice of the presentation of the petition and of the nature of the pro proposed security security accompanied by a copy of the petition basis of this application nine this application is made pursuant to the provisions of section eight of the supreme court act cap 605 and rules 54 c in bracket and d in bracket of the supreme court amendment rules 2015 rule 54 one in bracket provides as follows the court may review any decision made or given by it on any of the following grounds. A. Expressional circumstances which have resulted in A. Miscarriage of justice. B. Discovery of new and important matters, matter rather, or evidence, evidence which, which after the exercise of due diligence was not within the applicant's knowledge or 
could not be produced by him at the time when the decision was given. C. In addition to paragraphs A and B above, all applications for review shall be subject to the leave of the court first had and obtained. The, the application for leave shall be made ex parte not later than 15 days of the decision suit to be reviewed. We submit that the instant application was made within the required time frame. 10. The ground or conditions that would have to be established to warrant leave of the court are not provided for in the rules. However, this, honor this honorable court in a number of cases outline the principles rules the principal rules rather that govern us that govern an application seeking leave to apply for a review of its decisions in the case of bishop of banjul uh, fifth nyai c s c i v a p p number 10 2016 Delivered on 38 July 2019, this court held as follows. The essence of the requirement to seek leave to file an application for review is to enable the court to make a proper evaluation of the application to determine whether the applicant should proceed with filing an application for a review of the decision of the court. In such doing, the court will consider the prospect of certifying the standard test in establishing exceptional circumstances. The affidavit supporting an application for leave must therefore elicit merit to warrant leave to proceed to the next stage. The filing of an application for review of the decision of the court. It is submitted, therefore, that the sufficiency of the grounds for leave to be guaranteed lies on or lies in whether if leave is guaranteed, the applicant has any prospect of satisfying the standard test in establishing exceptional circumstances. 11. This court has, in a series of cases, determined what amounts to exceptional circumstances that would lead to a miscarriage of justice. In the case of Colonel Lamin B. Uh, B. O. Baji and six others, v, uh, five, the State Criminal Appeal number 1 to 7, 2011, unreported, where these courts per dots JSC referring to rules 54A in bracket of the Supreme Court rules stated that from the above provisions it does mean that for exceptional circumstances to be proven to exist which A fortiority or fort theory will mean the test for review has been met the following has to be met. 1. Establish exceptional circumstances before any assessment of whether there is a miscarriage of justice. 2. Exceptional circumstances in the context used means fundamental error. 3. If there is miscarriage of justice, a 40 year exceptional circumstances are present to warrant review. For finally, miscarriage of justice is established, but this is not the consequences of the existence of exceptional circumstances, then the conditions for review have not been met. Twelve, in standard in, in standard charter bank versus Assis Sar civil appeal number one two thousand eight, this court held the Gambia review jurisdiction should only be deployed to reverse a decision of the Supreme Court if there is a fundamental error 
committed by it which has caused a miscarriage of justice. It is not enough for an applicant to establish an error or order than a fundamental one. In UDP and orders an Antony General and, and one order supra the court said it is a jurisdiction which is to be exercised where the applicant succeeds in persu persuading the court that there has been some fundamental or basic error which the court inadequately committed in the course of delivering its judgment and which error has resulted in a miscarriage of justice. Pa, Dr. Date Ba, JSC, page 19, as they indicated. The exceptional circumstances in this case, 12, it is our submission that the court has inadequately made fundamental errors in striking out the petition on the ground of non adherent to rule 11 of the election petition rules as stated in the affidavit in support of this motion the applicant intends to re rely on the following grounds as the basis upon which such an exceptional circumstance exists a the court did not avert its mind to section 98 to in bracket of the election act which required the petitioner to give security for cost on the day of filing the petition or within three days thereafter a petitioner cannot comply with both section 98 to in bracket and rule 11 of the election petition rules the section required that security be given within three days or such further periods fixed by the court. While the rule requires the petitioner to give notice of the nature of the proposed security within five days of the presentation of the petition. Rule 11 of the election petition rules a subsidiary provision is therefore in clear conflict with section 982 in bracket of its parent act the court did not avert its mind to the consequence of such conflict. B. The court did not also avert its mind to section 98, 3 in bracket, which provides for the only instant in which further proceedings would be barred in respect of security for cost. This is limited to when the petitioner fails to comply with section 98 to in bracket refer to above not otherwise the court did not consider whether the petitioner having complied with section 98 to in bracket the petition can be struck out for non-compliance with the rule 11 c there was no application on any any of the motion filed by the first respondent to dismiss the suit for failure to serve notice of the petition on the respondents. The court made a fundamental error in proceedings so motto to strike out the petition on an issue not founded on any prayer before it and without affording the petitioner the opportunity to specifically address it on the issue before making a ruling. There are the foregoing fundamental errors resulted in a miscarriage of justice as it deprived the petitioner of its constitutional right confer by section 49 to challenge the elections even though the petitioner had already filed its evidence as ordered by the court. It thereby also deprived the petitioner of its fundamental rights to a fair hearing and by extension the political rights of its supporters confer by section 24 and 26 of the constitution respectively. D, the case cited to and relied 
on upon rather by the court no longer reflected progressive international human rights law on the interpretation of election petition rules e the court made a fundamental error when it stated that the petitioner cannot rely on service by the court 13 we will now address the court on each of these grounds to demonstrate the exercise of exceptional circumstance fundamental or basic errors which occasion a miscarriage of justice the conflict between section 98 2 in bracket of the election act and rule 11 of the election petition rules 14 the high risk of statutory laws which apply to election petitions are the constitution the election act and the supreme court rules read together with the election petition rules it is submitted that the foregoing laws have to be read together but with due regard to their order of precedence in the event of conflict 15 however the court in considering the third motion filed by the first respondent did not avert its mind at all the provisions of section 98 to in bracket the election act which is the primary provision that deals with security for cost it is our submission that had the court taken account of section 98 2 in bracket and the applicable principles on construction of statutory provisions the court would have arrived at a different conclusion it ends there so far it is too long but we've tried to manage it within short period so we will stop here for the news casting in english then we will be back with another story but different segment after a short jingle but different segment